I just listened to John Robert Bell's oral presentation and I'm going to go over certain points that were made in other people's presentations that he failed to present. Let's begin by looking at Gary Urofsky and Bite Size Vegan and their presentations and then I'll be going through that and seeing what John did that was good and what John did that wasn't so good in his presentation. Because we're going in. Can you speak a little bit to the intersections of veganism and religion? Are there conflicts there? Can they complement one another? And the only conflict going on is that if you claim to believe in God and you murder God's animals, you're a murderer of God. You're not believing in God. You're not worshiping God. Something I've noticed that is horrible. Religious people, and I don't care what religion you are, they never worship anything that God actually created. They only worship things that we created in God's name. Bibles, crosses, churches, synagogues, Korans, mosques, the stars of David, the Wailing Wall, phony images of Jesus. And by the way, let me just put this out there. If you believe in Jesus and believe he was a white guy with blue eyes and blonde hair from the Middle East, okay, you're not in fucking reality. There are no white people with blue eyes and blonde hair naturally born in the Middle East. So everything about religion has to do with made-up shit. Now, I believe in God, as I say all these people. No, I, be, I love God. I'll proudly say it. Okay, but I don't believe in the organized religious God that people have made up. I see God in trees. I see God's in, God in uh, cows. I look at cows and I see this huge head on a big red at the Sasha farm, you know, or a uh, Bima. I'm touching their, their heads are like 200 pounds. I'm going, man, what was God thinking when he made this head? I see a giraffe and I go, what was God thinking when he made this neck that's 17 or 20 feet long? I'm amazed at God's creations. Sadly, religious people see God's creations and all they want to do is kill them. John Robert Bell thinks it's okay to pay for the rape, torture, and murder of innocent animals that God created. So John, you get an X because you seem to fail to understand that being a religious person means that you're striving to be a good person. That's the first thing they do is kill them, kill them, steal their babies, rape them, fuck them, forget about them. I think the religion, religion r religious people got it backwards. Gary Yurofsky thinks that religious people have it backwards. When it comes to John Robert Bell, I agree. And actually, I'm going to give you another ex John Robert Bell because you really failed to understand the important thing, which is not to exploit God's creatures, but rather to look at them with amazement and protect them, to protect this planet, not to encourage your audience to keep on hurting them to pay for them to be raped and tortured and murdered in these cycles of violence that are the meat, dairy, and egg industries. Completely. Forget about the book. God is not in a book. Let me be clear about that. God does not exist on paper. When you were listening to this presentation, John Robert Bell, did you not pay attention to that part? Because I seem to think that you keep talking about the Bible and you think that God is in the Bible, which was written by humans. So I think you need to go back and follow Gary Yurofsky's advice. He's not in the book. Close the fucking book and walk outside. Close the fucking book and walk outside. Did you talk about that in your presentation? John? No. And look at what God created. And then you'll be a holy being. You know, it's not about long beards. It's not about covering your head in cloth. That does not make you a good person. Compassion makes you a good person. Compassion makes you a good person, John. You were supposed to watch this video and talk about that in your oral presentation. So I'm giving you another X for that. I'm looking for a check mark, John Robert Bell. I'm thinking about your speeches, many of them on TikTok, many different presentations. And I'm not sure that you ever talked about how important it is to be kind to the animals. 
Let's look a little bit, just take a break here from this and look at the definition of veganism. In one of your presentations, John, you didn't seem to understand that veganism is not just a diet. It's about being kind to the animals as often as possible, but let's look at the vegan society definition. Veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and by extension promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. So when you talked about the definition of veganism, you said that it was just about food, John. So I hope now that you understand what it really is about. Here we have another presenter that you were supposed to watch, and this is uh, Alex Hershaft, and he is a Holocaust survivor. And let's see if he understood what religion is about a little bit better than you did. When I first saw the slaughterhouse, yeah, I saw all those body parts and it just brought back uh, memories. Based on your experiences, why did you then choose to become a, an animal advocate rather than the human rights advocate? I think that the oppression of animals is the gateway drug to oppressing humans <clears throat> because when a child is first told that the dog on his sofa is to be loved and cherished whereas uh, the pig on his plate is to be abused, killed, dismembered and eaten for food uh, that's the first time that we instill the notion in, in a child's mind that it is okay to discriminate but when john robert bell was a small boy he probably underwent this crazy indoctrination but john your job was to watch this video and learn from it this man is a jewish man and yet he is vegan and he understands the link between the holocaust that happened to his people and what is going on still now to the animals between two living beings that uh, basically look and seem alike, which is uh, the, the basis of all forms of oppression, is that uh, you're basically telling one living being that he can live and another that he must die, uh, living beings who look basically the same. Obviously, as time passes, there are less and less people with direct experience of the, the Nazi-led Holocaust. Can you describe in its rawest terms what it is like having your human rights removed and being treated like nothing? Yeah, it's kind of hard to describe, but it really, you're, you're, it's probably as close as you get to identifying with what an animal goes through on a factory farm. What's so similar about it? Sure, a lot of similarities between the way the Nazis were killing <coughs> our um, people and the way that we kill animals. Uh, for one thing, uh, the identification of the victims by tattooing or branding their skin. For uh, another was the use of cattle cars to transport our people to the guest chambers. John, you were supposed to talk about the similarities between what happens here, what happened, which was terrible, a terrible massacre of humans who never did anything wrong. The Jews were innocent, and animals now are innocent. In your next presentation, I'll need you to explain in your own words what you've learned here, that the Holocaust is still going on and that it's not okay. And that if we are to be ca compassionate people and really follow what our religions tell us to do, which is to do unto others as we would have done to us and to not murder, then we will have a much more compassionate world. Uh, the crowded housing in wood crates, 
the deception and uh, hiding of the crime behind slaughterhouse walls or death camp walls. People don't seem to understand or realize that this, the old story of Old MacDonald's farm where animals are just happily playing outside is a myth now. This simply does not happen with the vast majority of products that we eat. They come from horrific abuse. So what do you say to the people that are offended by that comparison? Right, so we're not comparing victims here. Uh, obviously, because I'm a Jew, I'm much more sensitive to persecution of Jews. Because I'm a human, I'm more sensitive to oppression of human beings. But because I'm also uh, concerned with the moral universe, I'm also very concerned with the oppression of all living beings, including uh, sentient animals. How did you step out of your own experiences to, to empathize and relate to others rather than sort of staying in the, in the mindset and the mind frame of being a victim? Right, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, being a victim and identifying yourself as a victim is very destructive in a couple of ways. It's destructive in a personal way because it keeps you from developing your human potential and it's destructive in a social way because uh, it uh, gives you permission to ignore the suffering of others and perhaps even to oppress others. When looking at injustice and discrimination, is it important to, to focus on the victim or are you saying that's not very good, that's not beneficial? No, it's not beneficial at all because the victim doesn't matter. That's not, that's not going to solve oppression because the victim will never be the same. We're focusing on the victims rather than the cancer of oppression itself. And as long as we continue to focus on the victims, that will divide us and it will keep us from uniting and pursuing a common goal of eradicating all forms of oppression. It's easy now for people to, to look back at what happened in Nazi Germany and think, how on earth did that happen? Do you ever think there'll be a time when we look back in the same way at the, the horrors of, of animal agriculture and the plight of animals and the way they're treated? Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> absolutely we will. Uh, I think 50 years from now, people, our children, grandchildren will look at us and basically ask, what did you do? to stop the abuse and slaughter of animals. John, when future generations look back at the different speeches and the different oral presentations that you made, do you think they will be proud of you for defending the animal abuse that you're part of, that you encourage your millions of followers to be part of? Something to think about. Let's go back here again to Gary Yurofsky's speech. Person not harming somebody else makes you a good person. And for the record, I don't care what God you believe in, if you even believe in a God. I care about how you act. Your actions count, not your beliefs. Your actions matter. Are you killing somebody? Are you enslaving somebody? Are you oppressing somebody? Are you discriminating against, uh, against somebody? That's what counts and that's what matters. John Robert Bell, you were supposed to watch some footage of what happens to the animals. Do you think it's okay to treat innocent animals like this as objects? Do you think it's okay to murder baby chicks just because they're boys and they can't lay eggs?
Are you okay with gas chambers? How do you think it would feel to watch your friend being murdered knowing that you are next, John? Just because somebody named John wants the right to eat bacon and ham because he cannot control himself because he thinks that his taste buds are more important than an animal's life. How would you like it if you were stabbed in the neck just because somebody thinks your flesh belongs in their body, as opposed to on your own. The Holocaust never ended. Jewish vegans understand this. As a Christian, John, I hope that you truly look at your religion and what it calls on you to do. It asks you to be kind-hearted and compassionate. And going forward, that's exactly what you can do. Another presentation you were supposed to watch was Aaron Janus's Dairy is Scary. Everyone's so busy these days, I'm gonna explain to you how the dairy industry works in five minutes. Like other female mammals, cows only lactate, or produce milk, when they're pregnant or have a newborn to feed. So the dairy industry inseminates or impregnates cows starting at the age of around 12 months over and over and over again so they keep making milk. And it's a rather routine process. You see, first the industry jacks off a bunch of bulls, sometimes using a hand or help from an electro-ejaculator, which is basically a giant cow dildo that goes into the anus of the bull until he blows. John Robert Bell, when you encourage your fans to keep on paying for the meat, dairy, and egg industries, are you aware that you are encouraging this kind of abuse? sexual exploitation and that semen is collected and then inserted into the vagina of a female cow with a long tube usually while she's confined in what the industry calls a rape rack and are you okay john robert bell with the fact that rape racks even exist when you buy milk from that is comes from a cow or cheese ice cream, yogurt, instead of the vegan varieties, this is what you're paying for. This is what you're telling kids, the people that watch you, to keep on paying into. Sometimes they put their fist right into the anus of the female cow, you know, to loosen the area. To make the process as effective as possible. What are you, what are you feeling for in there when you, oh, sit jump. She's trying to get away. She doesn't want to be sexually violated, John. What part of your religion do you think tells you that this is okay? If Jesus was alive today, would he be okay with this? Okay, I think I would be if someone did that to me. He's bringing it out. He massages a little bit. John Robert Bell, are you okay with bestiality? Animals cannot give consent. They have the mental abilities of children. Would you do this to a child? If not, don't pay for people to do it to animals. Leave animals alone. We need you to become vegan, John Robert Bell and to join us and to help us fight against this. We need a more compassionate world and we need people like you to help lead your audience to be more compassionate people, not to live in denial and point to some book that was written by humans long ago. We need you to be with us on this fight, to be on the side of compassion and empathy. I know you have empathy in your heart for other things, you just need to extend it now.
and your presentations don't show that you have yet done that. Just to relax everything and help that semen go where it needs to go. Yeah, you must be responsible for a lot of calves. Yes. And when that baby cow is born, it's pretty much immediately taken away from its mother. Does this seem right to you, John Robert Bell? Have you ever seen a mother with her baby? The bond that a mother has to her newborn? When you were born, how do you think your mother would have felt if somebody had come and ripped you away from her and pinned her down and stolen her milk and then murdered you because you're a boy and you will never be able to give milk? I don't think you would be okay with it. And I don't think that Christians think that that's okay either. Christians are compassionate people. And most of them are becoming vegan now. Because when they see this footage, they make the link that they don't want to hurt anyone, especially not any of God's creatures who've never done anything wrong. Mother unlocked in a crate. Because if it stayed around mom, it would drink her milk. <laughs> and that shit's for us. And you see, a mother cow's bond with her young is very strong and affectionate, and she sometimes cries out for days in search of her baby. <laughs> but nobody gives a shit. Do you give a shit? I do. The other presenters here also give a shit. And that's what religious people need to correct. The world will be a lot better place if we actually embraced and protected God's creations instead of just killing them all. As I said in the beginning, I truly believe that the core of what one may call godly principles are very much in line with veganism. The tenets of do no harm, of love, of compassion, empathy, kindness. Aren't these the very bedrock of spiritual traditions? Do you agree with this, John? Do you think that you can go back into your church and look at the books in a different way now? If your religion is telling you to be unkind, you need to change religions. But really, you just don't understand Christianity. Don't hurt anyone. Treat everyone the way you would want to be treated if you were in their body. Isn't caring for the most vulnerable among us what countless religious practices advocate? Now, certainly we humans have perverted even the most noble of principles with our own selfish desires and motives. But when you really look at the original teachings and core philosophies of most religions, veganism fits quite nicely. I'm a huge advocate of the fact that anyone and everyone can be vegan. From atheists to evangelicals, Democrats and Republicans, black, white, Hispanic, what have you. Anyone from any background, ethnicity, religious practice, economic class, nationality, anyone can choose to live with compassion. To look into the eyes of an innocent animal and say, you deserve life. You will not die on my account. What is more spiritual than that? What is more spiritual than that? John Robert Bell, I look forward to your future presentations. I'm going to be looking to see if you've changed your attitude and if you're actually doing the homework. Remember, the homework is for you to watch Dairy is Scary completely. We've only seen parts of it here. To listen to Alex Hershaft's spe Hershaft speech completely. You also have Earthling Ed's channel here with 30 days and 30 excuses where you can read all of the things that you are thinking and why it is not okay to promote the violence that we take part in in our society towards animals. Remember this address, earthlinged.org, earthlinged.org. It is a forward slash 30 excuses. You can see here all the different things that are being talked about. People say even the craziest things like, um, what if a vegan was on a desert island? What would happen? And all the, the most insane excuses like that plants feel pain. So you watch all of these, John. Come back next time when you do your presentation and show me that you've also watched the documentary dominionmovement.com where you will see everything further about what happens to these poor innocent animals. Chickens, pigs, cows, turkeys. I only showed you a tiny glimpse. You need to be brave, John.
You need to be brave and to be vegan. And you can start now by doing the research. I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you to everybody who is in John Robert Bell's personal circle who can help him. Maybe together you can make popcorn and watch these videos. I don't know, whatever it takes. But it's really important that we unite as a, as a giant family here on this earth and help these innocent animals. Because in the end, it helps us too. Love is the answer. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. And please, if you like this, please subscribe. We're going to be looking at other different videos that will help you in your vegan journey. I'll be showing you different resources. We'll be looking at everything from recipes to different videos, even looking at over time all of Earthling Ed's videos together. All right, we can do this together. It takes a hundred clicks to become vegan. So you're on your way. Bye for now.